Welcome to the Depot Post Sports Chat. I'm Drew Rubinson here with Ed Owens at Milan Pushkar Stadium where WVU just fell to Texas 47 to 40 in overtime. Another heartbreaker for the Mountaineers, Ed. And, and when you look at the final stats, you see 47 points that Texas put up. You think it was a horrible day for WVU's defense, but that's not entirely true. No, it, it's really not. WVU's defense was constantly being put in bad situations today. Uh, WVU's offense four turnovers led to uh, Texas's first 16 points of the game. They really Really, really, we're putting the defense in bad spots, and I think you got to give the defense a lot of credit for keeping it as close as they did, especially early on. But when you look at it, the second half, it feels like it's the same story: a broken record, crucial situations. The Mountaineers' defense fails the the close the game out when they had situations fourth down that you think of late in the fourth quarter when uh, WVU Texas was facing a fourth and seven if WVU uh, forces an incomplete pass it's ball game over and over time there's two third downs that Texas converts onto their touchdown scoring drive is is it just uh, breakdowns and, and communication execution why does this keep happening yeah going into uh, last week they had no idea why it was happening they seemed to solve it a little bit at TCU even though this now makes the fourth game in a row where they've blown at least a 10-point lead in the second half. Uh, they seemed to figure it out last week a little bit and, and were able to hold on tonight. They just weren't able to do it. They had one, uh, they allowed one third down conversion in the first half, nine in the second half for Texas, which, which is just a horrible number right there. And uh, Texas was really successful down the stretch, which, which has to be disappointing for these guys. I think they were struggling, looking for answers, and, and after that, I don't think they've found them. What do you make of WVU's offense here, too? You look at the final scoreboard and you see 40 points and you think it's one of their most productive days. And it was also one of their most uh, uh, shooting themselves in the foot type of a days, too, where they, a lot of their miscues led to a, a Texas point. So it, it was kind of a mixed bag there as well. Yeah, five turnovers for WVU's offense. Uh, all five of them came from the quarterbacks. Uh, one fumble from, from Clint Trickett before he got injured, and then you had two fumbles and, and two interceptions by Paul Millard once he was in there. So the quarterbacks were really struggling with the pressure, or the offensive line was struggling with the pressure. The quarterbacks were paying the price for it uh, against Texas today. But yeah, I think WVU's offense really just had a hard time getting things going, especially early on. It seemed like they settled into a groove a little bit. Once Millard got out, got comfortable uh, he seemed to he seemed to open things up a little bit. Had that one really long pass to Mario Alford, 72 yards. It's the longest of the season for them. So they did show signs. They showed what what they could do. But then there's also some of those maddening times where they go out there late in the game. They they really could ice this one and. and by running out the clock and, and really put the screws to Texas. They weren't able to stay on the field and, and Texas came back. You, you touched some on Millard, but what do you make of his day where everything he's been through this season and to come out and do what he did tonight? You have to give him a lot of credit. I, I think for him to even be able to have his head in the game, he made the first two starts of the season and then was used sporadically. He was used to mop up duty against Baylor. He's, he's almost used it as a punishment for when uh, Clint isn't playing very well. He has no feel for it. You, you can't really go into a game cold like that so for him to be able to come in and play like he did I think you have to be pretty pretty positive about the way he did it obviously the the couple errant passes that you'd like to have back um, some of the decision making sure but I think overall you have to be pretty impressed with a guy like Paul and, and him being able to keep his head in the game do you think people should expect Millard next week Dana wasn't Dana Holgerson didn't say for sure it was a concussion but saying he bl that Clint Trick had blinked out makes you believe that there's a head issue those types of things usually aren't the quick fixes in a week uh, should folks expect Paul Millard next week yeah I'm not a doctor obviously and we can only go by what Dana said but uh, when Doug Rigg got his concussions they did try to bring him back quickly and, and he obviously had so many problems that they had to shelf him for the season so maybe they've learned from that maybe they're going to be a little more cautious with it we don't know I think based on today's performance Dana would probably like to get Clint back out there as quick as possible and, and try to give him another shot heading into these last two games of the season but I think it's just going to be one of those wait and see situations. Last one for you can WVU bounce back quickly? Such a heartbreaking loss to a historic program like Texas. Is is this the, the end of the road, or, or how do you look at it with these final two games here? Yeah, they can absolutely bounce back quickly, and schedule has is, is got a lot to do with that. They're going to be playing the two worst teams in the conference coming up. They've got Iowa State, and they've got Kansas, who, who between them has one conference victory at this point in the season. Uh, I think it's really 
a good opportunity for WVU to kind of come back, build their confidence up, win two games, then they can head into a bowl game. I think one of the things that you and I have been talking about is finishing the season strong. This is not the end of the world for them. Sure, it's it's a disappointing result today, but I think a lot of people went into this game chalking this up as a loss anyways. Texas was undefeated in conference play. So to be able to come out with a loss where they showed improvement and head into these final three, well, two, hopefully three games, uh, I, I think they can really do a lot to build momentum heading into next year. All right, very good. Appreciate it, Ed. And please continue to check vdpost.com for all the latest on the Mountaineers. Thanks for watching.